We are under the lights as the show gets you ready for another edition of Major League Baseball. Ought to be a good one here between the Miami Marlins and the Chicago Cubs. The Cubbies look to match the longest winning streak in baseball. Kerry Wood, a right-hander from the state of Texas, is the man on the mound here. What do you have for us on him, Danny? Boy, this guy was unbelievably good in this last one. Struck out a ton of guys in an amazing performance, and all of his pitches were working. Let's hope he brings that A game back with him in this one. Throw to first in time, and the bunt attempt is foiled. That is second. Up next from Miami, Miguel Rojas. And he's hoping to get things going at the plate. It's been a bit of a struggle for him in recent games. Hold strike at the letters, 0-1. Well, guys, as we look at the Cubs coming into play here tonight, they come in unbeaten and playing well here in the early going. Maddie, this is the best team in baseball right now. I, I mean, just a double-digit winning streak that, I mean, maybe happens to two or three teams a year you get this hot. This team is rocking in all facets right now, and they're a fun watch. First pitch of the at-bat on its way. Way behind that pitch, it's 0-1. Let's get it going, boys. Somebody's loose, hitting 98 with ease in the first inning. And Dickerson behind 0-2 now. And there are our umpires for this one. Working balls and strikes will be Mr. Daryl Parker. Hey, not a very big strike zone, but a strike zone that kind of moves around a little bit too much for my life. And the center fielder is under it to make the catch, and the inning is over. So a relatively routine start for the top of the first here. And now it'll be the Cubs' turn in a scoreless ball game. Jose Arena gets the call for game one of the series. What do we need to know here, Danny? Hey, you can't always judge a pitcher by the numbers. I know the ERA is into the fours coming into this start, but he's actually a pretty solid pitcher. And every once in a while, he can throw some decent games in there. It's not easy having an ERA under four in baseball. He's slightly over that. This guy's a better pitcher than that ERA indicates. And that finds some outfield grass. It's a base hit. And now the Marlins will have his terrific speed to contend with at first right out of the chute. He's lucky it's only a single back up the middle and not a double in the gap or a home run. Pitches like that in a show get absolutely hammered. Here's Javier Baez as he will take a look at strike one on a fastball right down the pipe. Head to head with Jose Urena. He's gone two for eight. Uh, had him reaching at thin air that time, and he's very quickly down 0-2. Here's a look over to first, and the runner back in standing. Softly hit down to third, likely no shot at two. Over to VR. Return throw not in time, and that turned into a closer play than I thought it would at first sight. It's really tough to double up a guy with the speed that he has, and he was hustling all the way on this ground ball. So they should be happy they at least got the guy out at second. It'll be interesting now to see if he tries to use that speed again and swipe a bag and get into scoring position. Well, this is pulled in by the shortstop. Here's Chris Bryant now. From the stretch, here's the pitch. Baez breaks from first. Oh, and this ball is absolutely blasted. High and deep into the bleachers and gone. Chris Bryant plates a pair with a home run. 41st home run of the year for him as the Cubs are out in front now two to nothing. That's how the manager drew it up right there. Hold the visiting team scoreless and then grab a huge home run in the first. Stepping in now, Billy Williams. Swing and a ball sliced fouled into the seats down the left field line. 
Orena has become known as a guy that's tough to take deep. So many starting pitchers find themselves snake bitten by the gopher ball, but he really limits that. Slapped hard the opposite way. Dickerson is there, and he'll make the catch. And that'll bring in Garrett Cooper. He was among the many who failed to record a base hit in the loss yesterday. Behind on that one, now behind in the count, 0-1. Fouled away. And he fouls this one off. He got a mistake right there, but missed it. Can't foul that pitch off in a big spot. 0 2 count. Hater caught too much of the zone. And he'll take the fastball here inside off the plate. It's 1 and 2. I can't blame him one bit out on the mound. I'm shocked he didn't pick up the rosin bag and see if he could get a foul ball on that one. He had to see if he would swing way outside the zone. And it's fouled away. The 2 2 one more time. Hopped up. Rizzo in foul ground. And this is going to wind up a foul ball. Fouled off. Still hanging with him. Another good swing to keep it going. And he lays off, so it's full now, three and two. He's definitely going to want to get greedy in his own, and he's obviously seeing the ball well, or he would have swung at that pitch. Sometimes in these long, epic at bats, you start to get into swing mode. And he'll indeed make the play in foul territory for the first out. That is it. The third baseman, Brian Anderson. Stepping in, Brian Anderson, as he'll get his first opportunity in this one. Now here's the pitch. Ball one. Fouled away. Bases are empty, one man out. Hey. One and two now. Yeah, I get it. They want to run this guy's pitch count up, but. That was a pretty good pitch to hit. He might be kicking himself that he didn't swing it that way. Got him swinging. Chased it well out of the zone, and there are two gone. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. Matt Joyce stands in as he swings and misses for strike one. Now the nothing and one from Wood. Line drive snagged on a short hop. Throw on to first, gets him, and the side is retired. One, two. And that'll bring Anthony Rizzo to the plate. He's set to lead off the home half of the second. One of the keys to securing a win, they want to keep the pressure on and try to build that lead as much as they can moving into the later innings. The windup and the 0-1. Lifted the other way out to left center. After it is Dickerson. He makes the catch. A great effort to get there and record the first out of the inning. That is so one away oh, here with the bases empty. Jake and that will bring up the multi-gold hey, glover boy. Jason Hayward. Back up the middle. And that finds its way into center for a one-out base hit. Digging in now, Wilson Contreras. First shot for him here with a runner at first now and one away. And a pitch out, nothing doing though, and that's ball one. Now a ball grounded to short. This could be two. To second for one, on to first. Not in time as he just hits the bag ahead of the throw. So it's a runner at first with two gone, and that'll leave things to one of the better hitting pitchers in the game, Kerry Wood. A pitch out, the throw, not in time as he's able to thwart the pitch out. 
So he swipes second despite the pitch out. Yeah, it seemed like everyone in the building knew he was going to be running there, right? Didn't make a difference, though. He got a great jump and absolutely burned it down to second to get in safely. And VR will look this one in to retire the side. Now to the plate, Harold Ramirez. He's the number seven hitter, but he's leading off the third after the first six guys in the lineup have been retired in order. Yeah, it's been a great start to the guy on the mound. It'll be interesting to see if they can find a way to get to this guy before he really settles in. This one's down to third. Bryant is up with it. Throw to first in time, and the leadoff man is gone to start the third. Well, it's still early, but it's also worth okay. noting that he'd be in line for the win if this keeps up as we take a look at the league leaders in games won this season. And as you see, he's right up there among league leaders in that department. So digging in now, Jorge Alfaro. He'll get to take his first cuts here. Now the pitch. Fastball taken, but that gets the zone for a strike. Marlins are still on the lookout for their first hit of the ball game. And there's ball one. Alfaro, the former Philly, he was acquired via trade last year. I know he'd tell you he'd like to be playing a little bit better, but I think it's as advertised for this ball club right now. I think the manager is getting exactly what they expected. And this is pulled foul as he was way out in front there. Count remains two and two. Now here's the pitch. And he fouls this one off. Another foul ball, and this battle will continue. Keeps fighting him off. The eighth pitch of the at bat coming up. And it's fouled away. And he finally wins the battle as this is swung on and missed for the second out. First pitch on its way. Jose Arena is in with two away now as he looks at a called strike one. Into the windup, here comes the 0 and 1. Bases are empty here with two men out. Swing and a line drive. And the Marlins had their first hit of the game. The throw into second, but the throw is offline, and he's in there with two bases. As we look again at that double here, you can see that he was thinking too right out of the box. Smashed it down the line, and that was some great hustle to beat the throw to second to earn himself a double. One and one to the Marlins leadoff hitter. Swing and a miss, and it's a ball and two strikes here. With the way this guy's throwing on the... And we'll have to leave it there as this is strike three, and that will... Bottom of the third now. And coming forward now is the shortstop, Ernie Banks. Third baseman in tight protecting the bunt, the first pitch. Hard hit ball to short. Throw on to first, and one shortstop grounds out to the other, one away. The batter, number nine, second baseman, Javier Valles. So the bases are empty with one man gone. And with it comes Javi Baez to the plate. First pitch of the at-bat. Hangs on him a bit that time as it's belted out toward deep center field. Joyce is back to the warning track, and he's able to put it away for the second out. Now batting, center fielder. So two are gone now in the Cubs half of the third. And in the bat next is Albert Almora. Hit hard towards center. That's his first base hit, making one for two now. Two out base hit. That'll bring Chris Bryant to the plate this inning. 
Boy, after that base knock right there, d -Roll, he extends his hitting streak to seven games. Yeah, and you can tell he's made some necessary adjustments at the plate. Anytime you're getting a knock every day of the week, you're doing things right. He's keeping that front shoulder tucked, staying inside the ball, not trying to do too much. From the stretch. Hey, a two out single isn't all that bad, but it can be when you've got this part of the lineup coming up. He's oh, one, gone. here's the pitch. Smoke toward third. Fielded cleanly. Throw to first in He's plenty gone. of time, and the side is retired. One hit. Ready now for the Marlins. Miguel Rojas. He flew out in his last at bat. Things not looking Miguel. very good so far in this one, but we're still in the middle innings. They're down by a couple of runs, and this would be the right place and the right time to get something going. The last thing they want to do is to try to come from behind and win this one in the eighth or ninth inning. All right, so time now for the Cubs' road to the show report as we see a couple of prospects who have been performing at a high level in the upper minors. So now to the plate, Corey Dickerson. No balls and one strike. No runs, just one hit, and no errors in the game for the Marlins. Fouled off. Hit back toward the mound. And that'll find its way into center field for a one-out hit. You don't see that too much in today's game. Most guys, it doesn't matter what the count is. They're looking to line them. Drive the ball out of the ballpark. Not the case here. Good two strike adjustment. Able to punch a ground ball through a hole for a single. Popped him up. Contreras is there. And he brings it in for the second out of the inning. Now battle. Third baseman. Brian Anderson. Stepping in and ready for another shot. Brian Anderson looking to put the ball in play here. He went down on strikes in his first at bat. He comes set. Here's the nothing and nothing pitch. Hit out towards second. Baez fields it cleanly. On to second for the force out and the side is. Ready to go in the bottom of the fourth. And next will be a speed thread in the form of outfielder Billy Williams. And this is sliced hard down the left field line. And this is going to be a fair ball heading out toward the 355 sign on the Ivy. Digging hard. He's headed for third. The relay throw. The tag. And he's called out trying to stretch two bases into three. To me, that was just way too big of a risk. If you're leading off an inning and you've already got two bases easily, Pull up and pat yourself on the back. You're already into scoring position, but now they've got nothing to show for the leadoff extra base hit. Now that is the right field. Jake Bag. So that'll bring up Jason Hayward. And a pitch out. Nothing doing, though, and that's ball one. The 1 0. Good speed at first and good speed with the guy at the dish. Going to be tough to double up these guys. If you're an infielder, got to get rid of it quick. Rizzo, base runner at first with one out. The curveball hit right back at him. To second for one. On to first as they get the double play to get him out of the inning. Welcome back to the north side of Chicago. Back here at Wrigley Field as we check in with Heidi. Matt, during the commercial break, I had a chance to catch up with manager Don Mattingly about the Marlins' offensive production. And one thing he stressed to me is the need for them to have more competitive at-bats the rest of the game. He told me he can't recall many times where they've been able to get to a full count today. And while that's not always a necessity for success, they've clearly had their struggles today, especially when it comes to making things difficult on the opposing pitching. Okay, thank you, Heidi. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. Matt Joyce is in for his second plate appearance as he looks at a ball. It's 1-0. and And he fires in a strike this time to make it one ball and one strike. You rarely see a pitcher of this quality throw one right down the middle. And man, as a hitter, 
probably a good chance you're not going to see that pitch again. Nothing fires me up more than watching a hitter take what a pitcher gives him. Pitches away, batter's able to keep his hands inside, not try and do too much, and just force feet a single. In now. On its way, the 0 1 pitch. Oh, and he's really getting the better of him now. It's strike two. Surprised the pitcher would even go to the top of the zone looking for a double play in this situation. Oh, and a lively fastball from Wood, and that's strike three. Didn't mess around much in that at bat, Dan. No, that was pretty impressive, Matt. I really like a pitcher that trusts and works off his fastball. Right there, he decided he didn't need to use anything else. Three straight heaters, and go grab some bench. No runs, three hits, and no errors in the game for the Marlins. He takes strike three called on the fastball. Couldn't pull the trigger, and there are two away. That's back-to-back -back strikeouts now as they've been unable to advance that leadoff single into scoring position. Yeah, clearly no problems working out of the stretch right now, Matt. He's taking control this inning after giving up that hit. Now we'll see if he can finish it off strong as well. Jose Arena will stand in for the second time now as he looks at a called strike. It's nothing in one. It was a double for him in his first turn at the plate. Swing and a miss, and that ends the inning. Left for Miami. They're still down. It's 2-0. Stepping up now, Wilson Contreras, as we move past the halfway point in this one and begin the bottom of the fifth. Hard liner to center field. Joyce has to roam straight back, but he has it for the first out. Now back, Sliding into the box, Kerry Wood fly down in his first at bat, so make him 0 for 1 so far. And the pitch. One out, nobody on. He looked like a caveman swinging a club on that one. It's 0-2 now. Oh, I love that pitch right there. Up and in. Jam. Sandwich. Lofted in the air out toward right center. Chasing after it is Joyce. He's got it. A nice play there. Two away. Now that it. Riding in once again, Ernie Banks. One for two. He singled and grounded out so far. Now a swing and another fly ball here as things are getting busy out there in Central. And he'll get there in plenty of time to put this one away, and that ends the inning. Back to the top of the Miami lineup now and stepping in, Jonathan Villar. And at this point of the game, I think it's clear that the plan of attack against the top of the order has worked. Well, when you've only surrendered one hit to the top three guys in the order up to this point in the game, you know you're doing something right, Matt. You're spot on. Whatever they discuss coming into this game has worked out beautifully. His command has been outstanding so far, hitting nearly all of his spots, and that's been a big factor why he's been so successful up to this point. Got him swinging on the fastball there. Jonathan Villar is retired to kick off the inning. Miguel Rojas is at the plate now, and he takes a cold strike. Whoo, that was some gas. Triple digits on the radar gun. Now that's popped up. Rizzo moving to his left. He's got it, and there are two down now. Striding in, Corey Dickerson. He's one for two in the ball game. Fouled away. And this is high, a ball and a strike. You know, over the course of a full season, you're going to have some clunkers, and this certainly looks like one. By the look on the manager's face, he's going to probably call a meeting after this. What up to an even 70 pitches after that last offering. And he struck him out, his eighth punch out of the ball game, and that one ends the inning. And that brings up Javi Baez. He started out the evening 0 for 2 so far. He's ready. Here's the first offering. Line drive to center field. Joyce is there, and he has it for the first out. The center fielder, number five, Albert. 
Almora. So here's Albert Almora next. A hit in two tries so far. That shatters as this is on the ground to first. Uh, this gets foul. It's 0-1. That misses wide. One ball and one strike. Bases are empty. One man out. A bouncer up the middle. And that is through into center field for a one out single. So make it two hits for him now on the night as this one finds its way into center. And as we take a look there at the team leaderboard, you can see he ranks third best on this Chicago ball club. Chris Bryant will stand in here, but before he does, let's take you back to the very first inning. This was a two-run home run right out of the gate that really got these guys off to a fast start. From the stretch, pitch out, nothing doing. And now the Marlins' bullpen will swing into action as a lefty and a right-hander start to get loose. One and zero pitch on the way. Well, should be two and zero, but he goes way out of the zone to go after that one, and it's even one and one. That's been a great pitch for him all night. Able to push and pull the throttle a little bit, throwing a good fastball located and mixing in that nasty changeup. And we'll have to leave it there as the play is made here. So here's the cleanup. Leading off for the Marlins. The first baseman. Aroldis Chapman will come on in relief now as he'll make his 10th appearance of the season. First offering on its way. And that's cut on and missed 0 1. Hey, you want someone sometimes to rattle the bat rack, but also the guy on the mound's got to eat too. They're executing their pitches out there. It's going to be tough to score some runs. Now the fastball is right by him as he swings and misses for the first out of the inning. This is what a power pitcher will do to you if he executes his pitches. That was a three-pitch strikeout. And with the kind of stuff that he has, it's not uncommon for him to absolutely dominate certain guys. Brian Anderson is in for the third time now as he takes a called strike. It's 0-1. Ball one. Just missed with that heater, but even if he wanted to swing, I don't think he could have caught up to that one. Banks into shallow center, but he can't make the play as it finds the outfield grass. Here's Matt Joyce now. As he'll chase one up around the letters here for strike one. Chapman, nicknamed the missile for obvious reasons. He's in year one of a new three-year deal. And a fastball swung on and missed as he just reared back there. Two away. At the plate, Harold Ramirez. He looked to bounce back after striking out his last time up. Owen won the count. Here's one that misses high. It's one and one. Two out with the man at first. Now a fastball gets the upper part of the zone for strike two. Hey, it looks like this guy's going to work in the upper part of the strike zone. It'll be interesting to see if this lineup can adjust to the way he pitches. And a foul tip here, but it's held on to for the out. Good work behind the plate. And the now the skipper's on his way out toward the home plate area, and I believe that means we're going to have a double switch here. Sterling Sharp will come on now, and he'll slide into the seventh spot in the lineup following the double switch. John Birdie will also come on now as he'll move into the pitcher's number nine hole in the order here on that double switch. Birdie. Just got the corner that time with a fastball. Strike two. Might have to change your game plan in the box right here. If he's going to pound away, might have to work the opposite field. And he fouls this one off. Got to believe the pitcher and catcher understand the fact that he's covering away, and he's covering way away. Don't be shocked if he comes in with something. Three. And he takes strike three called on the fastball. One gone. That's a pretty unique pitch sequence, guys. Usually pitching is all about mixing pitches and location. But he threw that all out the window to get that strikeout. 
he offered the same pitch three times in a row. So I guess he sort of used that reverse psychology to outthink his opponent. Got to be a little frustrated on the offensive side. Yeah, everybody's getting knocks and the batting averages are flowing right now, but nobody's come up with that big runner in scoring position, two out knock kind of feel that really is going to break this game open. Here's Jason Hayward now as he'll take a look at a high strike that time. It's nothing in one. And they pitch out here, but nothing's going on. One one, a bouncer to the left side. Oh, and he has some trouble with it. Over to VR. Relay throw, but it'll be too late as he's well safe at first. Well, he showed right there, White. He's such a tough guy to double up. He can fly, and he busted it down the line. So they just get the one out. Ready for another shot now. Wilson Contreras, third trip to the plate for him here tonight. 0 for two at this point. Swung on and missed. It's 0 and one. Hey, either this hitter needs a cup of coffee or he was sitting off speed right there. And he'll get back in standing. A runner on first with two away. And a pitch out. Nothing doing, though, and that's ball one. The 1-1. One -one. On a line, that's a base hit in the left field. And as you see right there, this streak will continue as he inches forward up the all-time list. The pitcher, number 54. Standing in now, Aroldis Chapman as he hits one on a line to left field. And the two-out threat will not come to pass. Ready to begin the eighth, and now it'll be the catcher, Jorge Alfaro. On to the eighth now as the first pitch is a fastball that's looked at for ball one. A ball and a strike. I'm interested to watch this next pitch right here. He got a swing on a high fastball. I wonder if he's going to pull the old plea sack and climb the ladder count even at two and two to the Marlins catcher gotta love a reliever that comes in firing bullets and his fastball is a good one and it's fouled away he struck him out the third time he's fanned in the game well, it's been a game of starting pitching so far is on cue. We give you a look at our starter comparison for these two guys in our 2-0 ball game. John Birdie comes on with one gone here as he looks at a called strike one. Tried to get him to go after the slider, but it's one and one. I know he buried that slider in right there, but that's a dangerous pitch. If he doesn't pop commit and bury that inside, it leaks out over the plate. He can get hurt with that pitch. Jonathan. So two gone now in the Miami eighth and the switch hitter Jonathan VR will be the next to bat. He's set and the pitch. A good fastball above the belt is normally a pitch that batters love to take a rip at but that one froze it behind 0 and 2 now. Got him and he goes down on strikes for the third time. One two. Lemmy Garcia will come on now to make his 30th appearance of the year so far. Now back to the top of the lineup, stepping in, Ernie Banks. It was a flyout for him in his last trip. Line drive to center field, and that finds the outfield grass for a base hit. Not in time, and he's in there with a double. He just tattoos this ball right here. Tried to sneak a fastball in on him? No way. Drives it to deep left center field. That was a nice job to get the barrel around in time to score that baby up. Now, oh my, this ball is crushed. Look at it go. Into the bleachers and gone.
Well, he turns on this thing and drives it out, extending the lead here to four in the bottom of the eighth. I wouldn't be surprised if that keeps the closer in the bullpen for now. No need to bring him in a non-save situation. Let him relax unless something happens at the top of the ninth that warrants getting him up. On the first, so a good bounce back pitch there as he gets the ground ball for the first out. The battle. So one gone here in the Chicago 8th. And into bat next, former National League MVP Chris Bryant. First pitch on its way. Swing and a miss that time. It's 0-1. Marlins have some action in the bullpen now as a right-hander is up and throwing. Hit the other way out toward right field. Right fielder is on the run. He's got it. A nice play there. Two away. Now with the play, Billy Williams. It was a backwards K, a strikeout looking for him in his last at-bat. First pitch of the at-bat on its way. The short hit hard. And the throw just does beat him at the bag, so the side is retired. Two for the Cubs in the inning on the strength. Digging in, Miguel Rojas. And to start out the inning, it looks like they've decided to stick with the same reliever out there, Dan. They have, Matt. I think the way he pitched the last inning kind of inspired that. But it's not uncommon for relief pitchers to have troubles after they sit and watch their guys swing the bat a bit. We'll see if he stays as sharp as he was before. Fastball called, strike three, and there's the first out of the inning. Pitch on the way. Corey Dickerson is at the plate here as he quickly finds himself down a strike. It's 0 and 1. Fouled off. One out, nobody on. And another foul ball. Fouled away. The next 0 2. Gets him looking up around the letters. Two up, two down on strikes in this inning. He looks really sharp out there, guys. He's ready. Here's the first offering. Garrett Cooper stands in as he can't connect here. 0-1. It's been more than two innings since this guy's allowed anyone to reach base. He looks pretty unbeatable on the bump right now. Swung on and hit deep to left center. This one has a chance. Catch is made, and the Cubs will add one more to their winning streak as this ball game is over. 4 nothing the score tonight. Here now is the final one.